There's a rather cool feature in OpenTX that allows you, uh, especially when I'm familiar at least with using iNav, that if you have your telemetry set up, so you got all these parameters coming in from your radio, um, it's all data from iNav, and you have that, you can use that, I like this, uh, the, the Lua script gives you all this live information. The other really neat thing you can do is if you set up in your special functions, there's a special function called SD logs. And what I do is I set that on the switch that I use for arming. So when I arm my aircraft, it is now recording. And I have it set to a 0.1 second. Um, so every tenth of a second, it is saving a file or a, a line in a CSV spreadsheet file. You can change this to once every up to 10.1 seconds in tenth second increments. So you can set it to whatever you want. I just like having all the data I can get. So I keep it at uh, tenth of a second or ten lines every second. So then um, when you're on your radio, you'll see here when I arm my aircraft, I get this little icon. That's telling me that it's recording now. If you go into your menu, in here there's a log folder on the SD card and it saved that file right there as a CSV file. Now we need to get the CSV file into our computer so we can do stuff with it. So there's two options for that. The one would be to take your back off your radio, take your battery out, pull your SD card, put the SD card in the computer, pull it from that folder. I prefer to just go ahead and plug in a USB cord. So this would use a USB mini, the USB, and just plug it into the radio. And then plug it in your computer. And when you do that, it pops up this little menu. Pick SD card. And it's going to pop up over here on the computer and it opens up our folders and then you go into your log folder and you got your files there. In this case I'm going to delete this one but normally I actually save these all into one folder from any of my iNav planes that I have set up to save a file whenever I fly so that way I have all that data in case I ever need it. And I've got this folder with all of my log files from flights back to March of 2019 when I started and when I learned how to do this. So it's really cool. You got all that data. If you need somebody says you're flying over your house and you know they weren't, or they say you were flying over their, their house and you know you weren't, you can go pull this up and it has all the GPS data in there. Now obviously showing them coordinates isn't going to do much. So what you can do then if we lower this and we go into OpenTX Companion and you see this folder with the little data sheet kind of sticking out and we open that, you can open a log file and since I have this folder where I keep all of mine, I can go through and I can pick any one. And I'm just going to pick one of these at random. When you open this file, it takes just a second, but you'll see here this is one session. It says 34 minutes. I'm actually going to find another flight and open it. If you disconnect your battery, it makes different sessions. So each flight, it's kind of nice because it also tells you how long you flew in that one. So five minutes, five minutes, two minutes. Um, but if you just pick one of those and then give you all this data, and again, like I said, if you're trying to show somebody you didn't fly over their house or something, oh, well, here's all the GPS data. doesn't really do much in that form. But if you click this box, it'll open up Google Earth. And it'll show you this path that you flew. Um, now, it's pretty cool because if you push down on your mouse wheel and things, you can actually see the path. But then if you come down, you can see it's 3D. So it's pretty cool. Um, I, I just am really fascinated by this. You can see here, I stood here by the trees and I threw it up in the air and then it came in and landed here. Um, and it's, like I said, I just, it's a nerdy kind of cool thing. But it, it also could be useful to show, like, hey, you said I flew over your house over here in this neighborhood, but I didn't fly anywhere near that neighborhood. So this was flying um, with the FR Sky data. It, you just save that log file, and uh, when you click that button, it opens up. No problem. Good to go. What I found, though, is that if you're using Crossfire, which I switched to in about uh, August time frame, when you look at that data, so uh, it's not going to be 3D. It's only going to come up two-dimensional. 
So we click this at Google Earth again. This was actually a flight I did out at Edgewater in this is flight test headquarters in the golf course they have. So this was FPV Fest. And you can see, oh, cool, it flew all around the golf course. But the problem is it's only one dimensional. Um, I wasn't sure why this was, and I kind of just gave up. And um, today, in December 4th, uh, 2020, I decided I'm going to try and figure this out. So I went on Facebook group and posted up saying, hey, is anybody else on the INAV group, fixed wing group, and said, has anybody else seen this issue? And Alexander um, posted up and said, I think it's one of the headers in the data is needs to be changed. So I went and I looked, and it didn't make much sense because we've got our GPS data, we've got altitude data in meters here. So it doesn't make any sense. you got your GPS, you got your altitude, why isn't it working? Well, if we go back and look at the older files, you have a GPS column here. We have a altitude column, good to go. Well, you also have a ground altitude or G altitude column. That column is not a data parameter sent through Crossfire or it's not titled ground altitude. So what I did is I opened up the file So if I open up this uh, SA-100 one from back in September, I believe this was out at Edgewater also. We've got our crossfire parameters, GPS, altitude, but there's no ground altitude. So all I have to do is come in here and change this column header and add a capital G. This has to be capital G, capital A, lowercase l, lowercase t, parentheses, meters or feet, and close parentheses. The open office was messing with me. It had autocorrect set, and it was reading this as GALT, and it was lowercasing the A, and when I tried that, it does not work. So you need to make sure that this is exactly like this, capital G, capital A, lowercases. Let me go ahead and save that file, and I'm going to go back into Open Companion. We'll open that file up. And we'll just pick one of these sessions and we'll open it up again here. And look at that, now we've got 3D data. So it's just a matter of Crossfire uses a slightly different header in the telemetry when it sends it through. And all you have to do is change that up. Cool thing, you can actually go through and uh, rewind the flight. Zoom out a little bit here so you can see the whole thing. So that's all you need to do if you've run in Crossfire. There's that one extra step to get the output into Google Earth to work. If you're running FR Sky, it's easier. Um, I hope that was helpful. If it was, um, please like, subscribe, leave a comment. If you've got questions about it, I uh, can try and revisit this. Like I said, uh, I kind of rushed through the setup, but there are other videos out there. Um, the one thing I didn't mention is I believe to get Google Earth to work here, there is some setup. I will leave a link in the description to the OpenTX um, description of how you do that. I don't remember off the top of my head, but I do remember that I had to do something. So I'll leave that link down below. And like I said, uh, thank you, Alexander, for suggesting that. I'm glad I got this uh, one more thing checked off, and I hope this video helps somebody out there figure it out also. So have a great day, and uh, happy flying.